how's it going? It's been a little bit since I filmed. Uh, there's things going on in life that uh, have to be taken care of, and it's kind of delayed me and my uh, ability to focus on this channel right now. So I apologize for the delay. I'm not going to go into detail. Some of them are good. Some of them are bad. You'll hear about the good ones in the future, and we're going to move on with 2019 AMC 10B Problem 16 in triangle ABC with a right angle at C. Point D lies in the interior of AB, and it's about this point that it's like, what are they talking about? And the reason is because you don't have a picture. So make one, make a picture. So we make a right triangle. Don't make it look isosceles if possible. We'll just go like this. Um, isosceles can make you think things that may or may not be true. Um, it says C is the right angle. We don't know where A and B go. Let's put A here and B here for now. Now, it says that D lies in the interior of, so it's somewhere on this segment, and E is somewhere on this segment, so that AC equals CD. Well, if I go here, that's not going to equal AC, so D would have to be, kind, it's not going to work, right? And so that part right there where things don't work that you drew is totally a normal part of the process. Do not think that you have to know exactly how to set it up to start a problem. Otherwise, you're wasting time. Just change the A to the B, and now it will probably work out. So, A and B here. I left that in the video specifically to talk about that point, that just because your first drawing isn't going to work out, that's okay. Don't freak out. Don't think that it's bad or something. It's normal. Okay, so now, we still have AB here, and we want AC to equal CD. So I want to fold this way and basically make an isosceles triangle right here between this and this. Okay, next up, E is on BC somewhere over here so that DE is equal to EB. So we kind of want to make another isosceles triangle about here so that this equals this. Okay, we're good so far. All right, uh, the ratio of AC to DE, that's this length to this length, is 4 to 3. Um, we're going to go ahead and make that 4X and this 3X, which means this is also 3X and this is also 4X. With all these 4s and 3s running around and right triangles, maybe there's a 5 involved somewhere. Let's see, what is the ratio of AD to DB, the two lengths of the hypotenuse of the original triangle? So, uh, what can we do? Um, well, we might not know how to begin, but we do know we have isosceles triangles, so let's just take some baby steps. If I call this little a, and then this will have to be little a by the isosceles triangle theorem. And furthermore, this will have to be, we can call it B if we want, but this will have to be B as well. And we know that since this is 90, that A plus this upper B right here, A plus B is 90. And since this is B and this is A, we know what that means. This must be 90 in the middle. And if that's 3X and 4X, there's the 5 that we thought might appear. So we've got 5X here. Um, next up, what can we do? Um, you know, I, I'd like to probably use some kind of similar triangles, and if I draw the altitude of this 3, 4, 5, right, um, you can find it in various ways what the altitude is. My preferred way is that any base times any height has to equal any other base times any other height. So 3x times 4x, this base and this height, has to equal 5x times its height which is the length we drew right here. So you can divide by five to get that the height is 12 fifths X. Okay, so then this length right here, let's go ahead and draw this separately real quick so we can look at it. We've got, this is 12 fifths X and this is four X. And we're looking for the ratio of this AD, AD to BD. Okay, so 12 this to this, okay. Similar triangles, right? If we made this the altitude, then we know it's 90 degrees to, you know, go with that 90 degrees. We can say the ratio of this to this, 12 over 20, uh, which is 3 fifths, is the ratio of the small triangle to the big triangle. Be careful, it's not 3 to 5, right? No, it's 3 to 5. 
right? Because the small triangle's hypotenuse to the big triangle's hypotenuse has this ratio, because this is the small triangle's base to the big triangle's base. So it's, this is 3x, and the whole thing is 5x, which means this is 2x. And since we want the ratio of AD to DB, we get 2 to 3. One last note on this problem. You might have had the thought, do I need the x's? The answer is no, you didn't. You could have just assumed this was 4 and this was 3, and the x's all cancel out in the end anyway. So keep that in mind. When you get a problem right, don't just say, oh, I got it right. I'm happy that I knew how to do it. No, 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 no. You need to try and learn about techniques for future problems. If we didn't have to write all of these X's every time, we probably could have saved 10 to 12 seconds or so that you could be investing in a later problem. See you in the next one. All right, so continuing on with the 2019 AMC 10B Problem number 17, I don't know. It says my screen is lagging. I don't know why. It says I have to close other apps, but there's no other apps open. So I don't know. Apologize if it lags or if my voice is doing something weird. It looks like it's dubbed in. I can't control that right now. All right, 12B. Uh, it was also 12B problem 13. A red ball and a green ball are randomly and independently tossed into bins numbered with positive integers so that for each ball the probability that it is tossed into bin k is 2 to the negative k for k equals 1, 2, 3, and so on. What is the probability that the red ball is tossed into a higher numbered bin than the green ball? Hmm, how are we going to approach this? If you've done the AOPS intro to probability and counting, there are some things in there that would help you to know perhaps uh, some strategic elements of the problem. But let's go ahead. Sometimes it helps just to draw some bins, right? This will be uh, k equals 1. This will be k equals 2. This will be... And that should be good. I mean, is it actually needed for the problem if you don't need to draw pictures of bins? Don't worry. But for some of us, it helps us think a little more clearly, and that can impact the problem later. So let's think about it. What is the chance, the probability, that the uh, red ball goes in bin 1? Well, it says that it is a bin k, which is bin 1 in this case, is 2 to the negative 1, which will be 1 half. Furthermore, green's not any different than red, so it's going to also be... Uh, a one half chance. By the way, there's no way, that, there's no set way to notate red bin one or green bin one. It doesn't really matter. You could spell it out if you wanted to, red in bin one, but that's a lot of writing. This kind of notation, you're inventing it in the problem. And people who invent the notation to do their problem faster typically save 30 seconds to a minute over somebody who uses worse notation. So have the confidence to pick something that makes sense to you. You could put different things in here than R1, but this is probably the most succinct way to state what we want to think about. So what about the probability of the ball, red ball going in bin 2? Well, then that's 2 to the negative 2 when k is 2, so that's going to be 1 fourth. And obviously green 2 will be the same thing. We could do one more of these. We don't absolutely have to, but it's going to be 1 8th, and the probability of the green ball in bin 3 is also 1 8th. Now, one question, why did we do this? Answer, we don't know. We did it to try to find more information, recognize something that we can use. Don't think that you only take actions and problems that have a guaranteed benefit. No, that's not how it works in, in difficult problem solving. You take any actions you can to find out any information you can and then see what you can do with that information, okay? So don't think that you have to have a, a full plan from you know, uh, starting at home base all the way back around to home base, first, second, third, you know? You don't have to have that. Just go a little ways and see what you can learn, okay? so. Uh, for k equals 1, 2, and 3, what is the probability that the red ball is tossed into a higher numbered bin than the green ball? Well, my thought is, what if they land in the same bin? There's no reason that that doesn't, you know, cannot happen or something. It's possible. So before I find that one, I kind of want to see the chance they land in the same bin because we can probably use that to find the probability that we want somehow. 
Again, it might not be perfectly clear how that's all going to work out in the end. Just find more information. Whatever you can find, find it and then act upon it. So the chance that green is in one and red is in one is one half times one half. You multiply their probabilities because they're independent. So the probability of green and red both in one is one fourth. The probability of green and red both in two is one fourth times one fourth. It's one sixteenth. And the probability of green and red both in three is one eighth times one eighth. So it's one over sixty fourth. Now this is going to go on forever. I wonder if it's some kind of special sequence or series, right? Because we have to add this probability to this one, to this one, add it all up. Maybe it's an infinite geometric series. And we know of some formula for that, so we kind of hope that that's the case. You notice that this times one-fourth is this, and this times one-fourth is that, just like that. It's geometric and we progress. The sum of an infinite geometric series is the first term over one minus the common ratio. So our first term is one-fourth. One minus the common ratio is also one-fourth. This is going to give three-fourths, and one-fourth to three-fourths is one-third, right? Because we're adding this plus this plus this to infinity, okay? And if it wasn't an infinite geometric series, how would you do it, right? So it's going to be complicated. You can kind of use that to say it probably is and, you know, help the process along. So if it's a one in three chance that both the red ball and the green ball land in the same bin, now let's think the chance that the red ball is tossed into a higher numbered bin. Does the red ball have some kind of advantage over green? In sports it might. They say that the team wearing red is typically a better, like they're perceived as a better team than teams wearing other colors. That's why a lot of teams wear red. But these are balls. They don't have feelings and emotions or psych psychological thoughts that affect their performance, right? It's pure probability. So because of that, um, if it's tossed into a higher numbered bin, green has the same chance. So whatever's left over after we subtract the chance they land in the same bin, each of them should have an equal chance of being in a higher numbered bin of what's left over. Since this is two thirds, the equal chance will be one half of that two thirds multiplied to get one third. The answer is C. I'll see you in the next one, guys.